All right, so welcome back. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using that row and column system we created, which is also what we based our movement on, in order to detect if we have a match. So the main idea here is really actually pretty simple. Uh, what we're going to do is let's say that we have these dots here set up. Doo -doo -doo. Um, what we want to do is choose any of these dots, and we want to look to the left, to the right, up, and down. And then what we want to kind of store is if the dot to our left and the dot to the right are the same image index as the dot that we're currently using, then we're going to call that a match. Now, you might think that this might cause problems, because let's say that we have a match for right here. If this dot doesn't see a match here and doesn't see a match there, then it won't register as a match. However, we're going to be doing this to every dot. So this dot will register a match here, here, and here. And the same thing will happen with this dot. It'll register a match here, here, and here. Which means that we will be able to find matches even on sets of five across, or as few as sets of three. And we're going to be doing this based on essentially a row and column system still. So what we want to do is every short amount of time, uh, we want to have each of the dots check around. So we want each of these dots to check left, right, up, and down. And then if the one that's to the left of it and the one that's to the right of it has the same image index, we're going to do something visual so we can make sure that we know that the program has detected a match. And the same thing for up and down. We're going to check up and down. And if both of those have the same image index as the dot that we're checking, then we'll say we have a match. Now we won't have to do this for every single dot. We actually only need to do it for, like this is row, or sorry, this is column zero, and this is our last column. We only have to do it for the first column up to the second to last column. And the same thing with the rows. We only have to do it for row one up to the second to the last row. Because um, any of these dots that are kind of on the edge here would get caught by any of those other ones. So let's take a look at what this looks like in code. All right, so again, this is where we left off. I got my board filled with dots. I can pull away, and I can have the dots switch places. I don't get any weird fatal errors if I pull from the edge. But I can create a match three here, just like that, and then there's no recognition of it. Uh, so now we're in match three here. So what I'm going to do is implement that code that we talked about. So first thing I want to find is our um, dot or gem object or whatever you're using as your game piece. So I'm going to open that up. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to uh, keep track of, uh, actually I'm going to create this alarm event that is going to be checking left, right, up and down. And we're going to be using our rows and columns to do that. So right away in my create event of my dot or game piece object, I'm going to add an alarm. So we'll say alarm zero is equal to something like five. We don't want to be checking every single frame. We could put this in the step event, but that would end up being pretty system intensive. And five frames is the way I have my room set at 30 frames per second. It's sixth of a second, which most people won't even notice. Anyway, so now that I have that there, I'm going to click on add events, and I'm going to add the alarm zero event. So what I want to do is essentially have this check to the left and to the right. So I'm going to create a couple of variables I'm going to use here. And by using the var keyword to make the variables, I'm essentially just creating these empty containers, and var allows those containers to be anything. So I'm going to create var dot one, dot two, dot three, and dot four. And these are going to be the dots that I'm checking to my left, to my right, up and down, respectively. So what I want to do is first check my dot that is to the left. So I'm going to check for horizontal matches. Now, uh, I already have in here a variable for my width. So what I want to do is I want to check to see if there's an instance at the position at my width minus 32 um, with the same y coordinate. And then if there is, I'm going to check to see what its image index is. Uh, then I'm also going to do the same thing for the right. I'm going to check to see if there's an instance position 32 to my right. I'm going to check what its um, image index is. And then if all three of our image indexes are the same, then I'm going to uh, 
declare them all as being matched. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say dot one is equal to instance position, and I'm going to do x minus width y o underscore dot. So I have an x y position I'm looking for and an object I'm looking for, and I'm going to say dot one or sorry dot two is equal to instance position x plus width y o underscore dot. Let me zoom in here a bit so it's easier to see. Okay. So um, next thing I want to do is I want to check to make sure that those dots actually exist. So I'm going to say if dot one is not equal to no one and dot two is not equal to no one. This is just checking to make sure that these two dots exist. If they don't exist, you can get some errors. And so this is what's called defensive programming, where you're trying to account for every option so that you don't have weird errors that you weren't expecting. Uh, OK, so if those two dots aren't equal to no one, meaning if they exist, I'm going to say if dot one dot image underscore index is equal to id dot image underscore index. You don't need to have the ID there. I just like having it to make sure that I'm referencing the object this is attached to. So if dot one's image index is equal to our image index and dot two dot image index is equal to ID dot image index, then we're gonna do stuff. So that fix yeah that fix the red. Uh, okay. So if their image index is equal to our image index, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of them to be kind of grayed out. So I'll say id dot alpha is equal to 0.2. And I'll say dot one dot alpha is equal to 0.2. And dot two dot alpha is equal to 0.2. So what I'm doing here is I have this checking dots one, two, three, and four. I'm going to check for horizontal matches. I'm going to make dot one is equal to this, dot two is equal to this. If they both exist, I'm going to check their image indexes. If they're the same as mine, I'm going to create, I'm going to make all three of us be grayed out. The next thing I want to do, kind of a little bit further down, is reset this alarm. So I'm going to do alarm zero equals five, so that it's going to be going off every five frames. Uh, okay, so let me save this and then we'll run it Zoom out a little bit here uh, we'll save and then we'll run and we'll see if this works the way it should and right now we're only checking for horizontal matches so we should only see the pieces get grayed out if there are matches horizontally so let's try to make a horizontal match here mm -hmm. okay so did not gray out did I forget to set my alarm to begin with. Oh, I got alarm zero equals five. Dot one, dot two, dot three. Uh, X minus width. Hmm. Is equal to my image index. Okay. Checking to make sure that they're there. Hmm. I'm going to need to check something here really quickly. Okay, um, so that's what my error was. Um, I was not thinking. So what I want to do, instead of just checking for alpha like this, I want to do image underscore alpha. Image underscore alpha and image underscore alpha. Okay, so if I save this now and hit play, you should be able to see the pieces gray out when I have a horizontal match. Uh, some of you might have noticed that every time you hit play, you're going to get the same board again and again. Like this is the same board I had a second ago. Uh, let me just switch those to show you. Yep, grays out. Um, to have this randomize every time, when GameMaker starts up, it creates uh, something called a random seed. And that random seed stays the same, which is what it uses to create random placement. Uh, but if the seed is the same, then the placements are going to be the same. So in order to make your board random every time, all you have to do is go into this create event here. And at the very, very top, before I do anything else, I'm just going to 
randomize, which is going to randomize that seed so that I get a different board every time. So if I hit play right now, I should see a board where I don't have those two orange with one up above it like I did before. But let's check. So yeah, this is a different board. Um, but now you can see I'm getting uh, matches horizontally, but I'm not getting any vertical matches. If I do this, it doesn't recognize the vertical match. So all I have to do is go back in here into my alarm zero code, and I'm going to essentially copy this logic again. So I'm going to copy and then paste it down here. And instead of doing dot one and dot two, I'm going to do dot three and dot four. And instead of checking um, minus width on the x position, and leaving y alone, I'm going to leave x alone and check minus width on the y position. And then I'm going to leave x alone and check plus width on the y position. And I misspelled width up there, so let me fix that. There we go. Now uh, I'm checking to see if the instances exist of dot three and dot four. And I want to check to make sure that dot three image index, dot four image index is equal to our image index. And then if they are, I'm going to make dot three and dot four grayed out. So if I save this and hit play, uh, I should be able to see my pieces turn to gray when I have both horizontal and vertical matches. So looking right here, if I make a vertical match, I've got the pieces grayed out. If I make a horizontal match right here, the pieces gray out. Now, right now there's a lot of stuff that we're missing. For example, um, if I try to make a match where there isn't a match, the pieces don't move back. So that's something we're going to fix next time. Um, that actually won't be too complicated, but uh, we will take a look at that next. So for now, we've created a method to detect matches. So congratulations on making it this far. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below. And I hope you have a wonderful day.